Today I'm going to do a full review on Knives of Alaska Extreme Yukon model number two, so stick around. Hi, I'm the OCD Hunter bringing you tips, tricks, DIY hacks, and other useful ways that my OCD can help make your life a little bit more simpler. I've always been very curious about this Yukon knife and its Canadian belt knife style. I've never really used any Canadian belt style knife before, and because of this, I never truly understood the design. After doing a lot of research, I found that there were not a lot of YouTube videos on the Yukon. So I contacted Knives of Alaska and asked if they would send me one so I could do some testing on it. And actually, I gotta take a second to comment on Knives of Alaska customer service. I have contacted them many a times and they've always been quick and courteous with the response with their email. So I just wanna take a second to say thank you, Debbie, for putting up with me. Anyway, let's get back to the knife review and let's first start with the specs. This is a three and three quarter inch hunting non-glare matte finish blade. The knife has an overall length of eight and a half inches and only weighs 3.9 ounces. Made from D2 steel, Knives Alaska heat and cryo treatment gives it a rock well hardness of 59 to 61. The sharpening bevel is 18 to 20 degrees and the handle is their sure grip technology. Here you can see it's in hunter orange, but it is also available in black. One thing I first noticed when I received this knife is that not only is it extremely light, but it is very balanced as well. No matter how many times I put it down and pick it up, it is easy to find the balance point. And without gripping it, it stays on my finger like a camera does on a gimbal, even when you move front and back, side to side, or up and down. The knife just stays put. On the back side of the knife, there is some jimping, but it is very comfortable on the thumb because the edges are all rounded. This is the Model 2 version, so the swedge on the knife is not sharpened. On the version 1 model, this area is sharpened, but for gutting an animal, I decided to go with an unsharpened swedge to avoid nicking the stomach or intestines. As far as I know, this is the only difference between the two models. But let's cut to the chase. This is a hunting knife, and it's like a surgical tool in your hand and it is purposely made for skinning out animals. I spent a lot of time studying this blade while working with it in my hand. And while doing so, I noticed something. When using this in a skinning motion, it is extremely ergonomical because the blade is already angled back when you hold it in the hand with your wrist in the neutral position. If I compare it to the Alpha Wolf, you can see what I'm talking about. So what I figured out was, to skin with this knife, you simply go from your neutral wrist position to a natural forward motion of the wrist, and then back to neutral. There is no hyperextension of your wrist. Whereas with the Alpha Wolf straight blade, you have to hyperextend your wrist to cock the knife back into the starting position. Then slice forward with the wrist, and then back past neutral to hyperextension. Now this is not that big of a deal if you're just processing one animal. But I can see when you start doing larger animals and multiple animals that this would actually make it less stressful on your wrist while working with much less fatigue. And therein lies with what I think is the true secret about this blade. Now keep in mind what this blade is suited for, game processing. But I asked myself, could this be a good belt knife and assist with other camp and woodsman chores? I put this knife through the paces just to see how the knife would fare. With a blade less than four inches, I wouldn't be batoning very big logs, but instead I'd use to just break down some smaller wood into kindling. The thin blade actually did very well. The shape of the handle puts your hand higher than the blade when batoning, which actually gives you some extra leverage. But one thing I did notice was that the blade always wanted to curve forward and not go straight through the wood. I'm not sure if it was me or the knife, but I did do it consistently enough that I didn't feel like I had the control I would want. Chest lever cuts did well. Remember, this blade is designed to slice and using it in conjunction with your back muscles, it removed a lot of material easily and quickly. Using the hammer grip is where you can see that this blade shape, which was ergonomical for skinning, actually starts to work against you because the knife is cocked back while your wrist is in neutral position to hold the blade perpendicular to the wood. You have to keep your wrist extended forward to use the knife. 
This is very fatiguing for two reasons. One, because you are using extra muscles in your hand and wrist just to hold the blade in its position. And second, with the natural tendency of the knife to move back because of the resistance of the wood, you have to add extra force to keep your wrist in that forward position. So not only do you have to have your wrist extended to get the blade in line to cut, but you have to also use the same muscles to overcome that back force. Because this knife is so thin and a slicer, creating feather sticks are easy, but you run into the same problem of fighting the blade's angle, much like using it in a hammer grip. Carving the blade does very well with push cuts, X cuts, and stop cuts and you can produce some very fine carving tasks like pot hangers because of the thin blade. The spear point is in line with the knife, as you can see by hanging it from the lanyard. So with the blade shape and it being center line, plus with the swedge, it does a great job at drilling even small deep holes, and if you angle the blade, it slices nicely to make shallower, wider holes for things like a bow drill spindle. The spine isn't that great for throwing sparks, but will throw them. But the curve on the underside where your fingers go really work well to throw sparks. The curve shape just rides down the ferrocerium rod, so fire starting ends up as a positive for this knife. One other thing I noticed with this knife is that you would think that your fingers would run up through the blade, but that's actually not the case they actually have a pretty good stop and this back little corner isn't sharpened. So when I put my hand here and flex it, it actually will not go over the edge. Moving into the camp kitchen, the thin razor sharp blade does well to cutting thin slices of vegetables. You can literally just push the blade through just as easily as if you were to draw the knife back in a slicing motion and the design does aid with rocking the blade for dicing as well. The knife has a nice spear tip, and you can see compared to the Alpha Wolf that it has an advantage for making an initial incision. There is little to no resistance. Of course, its strength is a skinny ability. Using that nice swoop of the blade allows you to control the knife easily. Here you can see I skin some salmon and only lose a tiny bit of meat. As for the sheath, the style is not normally my choice, but the design is a lot better than the bush camp where I kept cutting the leather trying to resheath. There is just enough of a raise in the leather that allows you to resheath this knife without even looking. So there you have my review on the Yukon 2. Will it replace my Alpha Wolf? I would say at this point, no, but I am interested in doing a side-by-side -side comparison to see if that would change my mind. But this unique little knife is actually very impressive and I'm going to continue to test it to see what else it can do. I'm the OCD Hunter and I hope that my continual painstaking practice of changing, fixing, and improving on ideas will help you out in your endeavors. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell next to the subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Comments are always welcome.